On today's show, are the Houston Rockets potentially in play for a Giannis Antetokounmpo trade? Should the Rockets be trying to trade for a Giannis Antetokounmpo? We're going to unpack it all on today's Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control, Houston. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian and credential media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Thursdays. Be sure to follow along wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Just search Locked on Rockets, where the best way you can help us grow our show is to listen every single day on a podcast platform of your choosing. Like and subscribe on YouTube. While you're there, drop us a comment. Say go Rockets. Tell me why you do or do not want Giannis Antetokounmpo on the Houston Rockets. Give me all your thoughts in the YouTube comments. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off of your first purchase. And as always, thanks so much for making Locked On Rockets part of your day every single day, whether it's on your way to work, on your lunch break, in the gym. Thank you so much for being an everydayer. We're going to get very hypothetical on today's show as rumors have been swirling Uh Crazy, pretty, not, I don't want to say call them crazy rumors, but um, pretty strong rumors about Giannis Tendacumpo and his current displeasure with what's going on in Milwaukee. The Bucks just absolutely struggling. They, they Bucks look awful. They, they are at the bottom of the Eastern Conference to start the season. Uh, they do not have any reliable means to improve the roster, a very aging injury riddled roster. Like the, the, the bucks are kind of screwed at this point. And I'm not, I've never been shy about, it. I'm not a huge doc rivers fan either. I think he's one of the most overrated coaches in the NBA. The bucks do not have a lot going for them other than the fact that Giannis is one of the best players in the NBA right now. That's all they've got, but they don't have the tools to be able to put a competent roster around him at this point, and it seems like we are inching closer and closer every day to a Giannis Antetokounmpo trade request or trade demand. So let's unpack. We're, we got a lot to get into. We're going to tackle it from so many different angles. Uh, you know, should the Rockets explore a trade? What would a trade look like? Uh, pros and cons. Going to get into a lot of stuff in today's episode. So first and foremost, um, my immediate reaction is just, why Giannis? Of all the star players that could have potentially shaken loose for the Rockets to to try and, I don't want to say go all in on because it's not really an all in move necessarily, but this is what you have to entertain when you are a team trying to break back into the title conversation is you have to be able to entertain the idea of combining and 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 putting together your assets, future assets, current young pieces, whatever, and making a big move in order to jettison yourself back to relevancy. Uh, I know that a lot of Rockets fans have probably fallen in love with the idea of, you know, all the the core seven being in Houston for their entire careers and and Jalen Green and Alper and Shingun turning into all-stars and leading the Rockets back to the promised land. And, and that's great. Um, the likelihood of that happening is so slim to none, though. Very few teams are truly built from, you know, top to bottom through the draft, right? We knew going through this rebuilding process that the Rockets would at some point possibly have to consolidate assets, package, some, you know, multiple young guys together to trade for an established star player, it's just also kind of yucky that the star player in question might potentially be Giannis, especially after years of animosity between Rockets fans, Bucks fans, the Harden Giannis years, all that stuff. But look, let me, I, I, let me, I should have included this tidbit first, but this is a very uh, early conversation. And th th this, this trade, if it were to happen, uh, or for the talks to even start heating up for Milwaukee, I do not expect Giannis to be dealt like at midseason, at the trade deadline or anything. At the earliest, I feel like Milwaukee would have to explore trading Giannis next summer. Um, the situation with Milwaukee right now actually feels eerily reminiscent of what was going on at the end of the James Harden era in Houston, right? Where 
Houston was devoid of assets. They didn't really have any means to improve the roster. They were kind of grasping at straws. They had a really uninspired start to Harden's final year after a disappointing playoff exit. Like all the same signs are happening in Milwaukee right now with Giannis. Giannis is even roughly the same age, I think, that Harden was when he decided to uh, bounce from Houston. So this wouldn't happen this season. It wouldn't be like a mid-season crazy trade that the Rockets make. The earliest things would happen would be next offseason. So I think that's a really important point to at least include here from the jump. And I'll, I'll, I'll do one point in, in favor of not doing the Giannis trade potentially. And that's the fact that the Rockets still need to see what they have with the team this year. Because if the Rockets have like breakout seasons from multiple of their young players, if Jalen Green looks like an all-star this year, if Alperin Changun continues to look like he did last season or he potentially even levels up even further and looks better again this year, uh, if any of the other young guys break out, if Jabari looks good, Tari, Amin, Cam, Reed, I mean, you have so much potential up and down that core seven that there is a, a pathway, there is a possibility that this Rockets team doesn't necessarily need to trade for an established star player. Again, I think the likelihood of that happening is very slim to none. Not saying that I'm like down on any of the young core or anything, it's just to be able to win at the highest level in the NBA, you need a top 20, top 15, top 10 kind of guy. Ideally, you have multiple of those players, right? Ideally, you have like a top 10 guy and a top 20 or 25 guy in the NBA to be able to win at the highest level. And at the end of the day, do we like maybe one of the Rockets core seven turn into a player of that caliber? But it seems increasingly Unlikely, But that's what this season is about. This season is about, and, I, and I, again, that's not to be down on Jalen or Shingun or whatever. It's just generally like top 10, top 15 talent kind of guys, whatever. You pretty much know or recognize that it's one, like you have one of those guys pretty early on in their career. It's pretty rare for a guy to like figure it out and become like a top 15, top 10 player at year four of their NBA career. And again, maybe the Rockets still have one of those guys with one of the other young guys. Maybe it's a Min Thompson. Maybe it's Reed Shepard. Who knows? But that also involves waiting further down the line, right? Playing that waiting game even longer. The Rockets are ready to start winning now. And that's kind of the issue is you have to start balancing, okay, how much longer can you wait out the potential of some of these young guys versus making moves to make your organization relevant again in the here and now. And at least for this season, the Rockets have one more year of gathering data, of trying to figure out, okay, what is Jalen Green? What can Alperin Shingun be? How much better can all these other young guys get before they have to make some decisions and some hard, some tough decisions about, okay, we really believe X, Y, and Z players are foundational pieces that are untouchable. We do not want to include them in trades versus, okay, ABC players, we can lump together in a package with a bunch of future picks and some salary filler, and then boom, that's the that's the offer we put on the table for a, a superstar, for an established star player. Now, coming up, I want to get into what a trade deal would ultimately look like for the Houston Rockets and the Milwaukee Bucks. Want to get into some other some of the other pros and cons of what this deal would mean for Houston, as well as taking a look at some of the other competition out there when it comes to who would be in play for Giannis at this point. We're going to get there in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by Hims. Look, guys, your sex life is important, but maybe your schedule is incredibly busy, right? You don't have the time to go to a doctor's office to get treatment for ED. Through Hims, you can get personalized ED treatment without stepping foot outside your door. Hims is changing men's health care by providing you with access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your very own couch. Hims provides access to a range of doctor trusted ED treatments like chewable hard mints and Viagra and Cialis and their generics for up to 95% cheaper. The process is 100% online, so there's no need for uncomfortable doctors. 
doctor's visits. Start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash locked on. That's hymns.com, H I M S dot com slash locked on for your personalized ED treatment options. Hymns.com slash locked on. The products mentioned are chewable compounded products which are not approved or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. And continuing on here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Okay, so what would a trade for Giannis look like if you're the Rockets? This is the, the million dollar question. And to before getting into the trade specifics here and what it, what a deal could ultimately look like or should look like, whatever, I think it's important to note the competition that the Rockets would be facing in this and and, and the the reported teams that have interest in pursuing Giannis that are betting favorites to pursue Giannis, the de- the destinations that Giannis would potentially want to go to Miami, New York, um, right now the 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 Heat, the Nets, the the Knicks, they're all kind of front runners in this Giannis sweepstakes, if you will. But the Rockets are firmly in the mix, and when you start comparing the Rockets to these other organizations, I don't think they can hold a candle to what the Rockets could potentially offer in a Giannis trade. The Rockets could easily put together the best package for Giannis. And it's worth noting that, yes, you know, we're in the player empowerment era and players can often dictate what happens, where they go, where they get traded to, whatever, with a trade demand, put a short list of teams out there. But as illustrated by Giannis's very own teammate, Damian Lillard, that doesn't always work out in your favor. Dame wanted South Beach. That was his destination. He wanted to team up with Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo. He wanted to go to Pat Riley, like all that stuff. Didn't work out. And Dame had to expand his list and ultimately include Milwaukee. And then the Bla- the Blazers felt the need to do what was best for their organization. And I could see a similar situation playing out with Giannis. Now, may- look, maybe Giannis has more cachet, you know, won a title for the Bucks, back-to-back MVP, you know, uh, best player in franchise history. He's got maybe a little bit more weight to throw around, um, a little bit more... Uh, gravitas, whatever, to be able to get to, you know, get whatever he wants. Maybe, maybe the Bucks are just like, you know what? Fine, you've done so much for us. We'll send you to wherever we want, even if you know the deal from Team A is not as good as the deal from Team B. If it's at least you know relatively close in 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 scope, then maybe they'd be willing to do that. Who knows? But at least when you put pen to paper and you're looking at what the other teams could potentially offer the Rockets offer would be head and, you know, head and shoulders above the rest of the competition. Now I, I will say if, if a team like the thunder were to suddenly get involved because Sam Presti and the thunder have more picks than, than the rest of the NBA combined, then it's curtains like OKC would win out immediately. But OKC is also in this advantageous position of already being one of the best teams in the NBA with an exciting young core. One of the youngest, if not the youngest team in the NBA, I forget if they are the youngest team in the NBA, but one of the youngest teams in the NBA for sure. They've got their top three, top five, you know, year in, year out MVP candidate and SGA. I don't see a world where the Thunder would feel the need to blow things up to try and acquire Giannis, um, especially considering the fact that, oh, well, let me rephrase. Maybe if they have like a disappointing postseason run this year, if they if they get bounced in the first round or they, they stall out in the second round again, then maybe... Presti feels the need to shake things up and add Giannis to that team. And you could make J-Dub like the, the, the headliner of that deal. And you could put, you know, a big three together of SGA, Giannis, and uh, Chet Holmgren. Like, that'd be kind of an insane team to watch. But I don't think OKC is going to get involved. So, that being said, uh, what would the Rockets deal ultimately look like? That's That's really is the important question here. And I think... As painful it is to, as it is to have to talk about this, and again, I illustrated my point in segment one that a lot of this is very much still up in the air. A lot of it's very dependent on what happens this season with the Rockets, right? How good can the Rockets become this season? If they take a massive step forward, if, if Jalen and Shingun look like true star-level players, then maybe they don't feel the need to trade for Giannis. But I think any deal for Giannis and Tidakumpo probably has to start with Alper and Shingun. As much as it pains me to say that, I don't see a world where those two guys can coexist on the same team. I'd be very intrigued to see Giannis defensively next to Alper and because I feel like that's everything you would want in a four next to Alpi. The the rim deterrent presence, the weak side shot blocking, the, the help defense, uh, the ability to roam and kind of blow things up defensively. All great, right? All things that we kind of hope that Jabari can grow into next to Alpi as the starting four. 
That being said, the offensive fit is super clunky. And maybe with, you know, a truly uh, creative offensive approach or offensive-minded head coach, you could find a world where Shingun and Giannis could coexist and, and make things work despite neither of them really being floor spacers. But it puts a lot of pressure on the other three guys on the floor to be knocked down dead-eye shooters. And I don't have the, a ton of confidence that Ime Odoka has that offensive creativity in his bag, ultimately. It's been a little disappointing what Ime's put together so far offensively for the Rockets, and I don't expect it to get better overnight, um, especially if they were to try and pursue a clunky fit like that. So I think your your headliner in the deal would be Alper and Shingun. And if you're the Bucks, you're you're absolutely asking for one of Jalen Green or Alper and Shingun. But if you're the Rockets, you're not parting with Jalen Green because you would want to pair an elite guard with Giannis and Tedekumpo. So you start with Alpi, that's one piece of the trade. Next, I think you have to, unfortunately and regrettably, for a lot of the same reasons as Alper and Shingun, you would have to probably look at Amin Thompson. The fit next to Giannis would be very questionable. Uh, both non-shooters, both guys who actually play a very similar style of basketball, right? Defensive wrecking balls, and then offensively, they want to get downhill, they want to bully ball their way to the rim, they want to overpower smaller players, they want to use their speed to get past bigger players. Um, look, I, I have all the hope and optimism in the world that Amin Thompson can become a star in today's NBA. I think he's already playing like an all NBA defensive caliber player at just in year two. He's already the Rockets best defender and he's one of the brightest spots for this team moving forward. But you gotta, you gotta get, give something to get something. And if you're the bucks, I feel like what better way to, you know, reignite your rebuild than getting your hands on Shingun, who's already playing like a star, you know, who's put up all-star caliber numbers, and Amin Thompson, who projects to be kind of a mini Giannis, honestly, with his skill set, right? Like, that's kind of the crazy part, is they they play a very similar style of basketball. Giannis is just a bit bigger, a bit stronger than Amin, and so he's been able to tap into that physicality element of his game that Amin is still trying to figure out. But Amin's only in year two. That's the crazy part, right? What does a men look like in year three, four, five, six down the line? That's the really hard part when you're the Rockets and you're trying to figure out, okay, which pieces do you keep? Which pieces are you willing to trade? You know, you don't want to be on the wrong end of a deal. You don't want to be the team looking down the pipeline and thinking, God, we we turned the Bucks into a perennial contender because we traded Shingun and a men and whatever other pieces. And those guys all turned out to be legitimate star players. That's the really hard part about making these decisions. And I'm not envious of the Rockets front office and, and GM Rafael Stone for trying to have to figure this stuff out. But I think you got to look at Shingun, Amen, and then probably one or two more guys between any combination of, you know, Cam, Reed, Jabari, and Tari. Uh, I would be holding on to Reed Shepard and Tari Eason at all costs, honestly. Uh, I think those two guys are going to be such effective players. Tari already is an effective player and, you know, realistically should be starting for the Rockets if he wasn't still ramping his minutes up and uh, coming off, you know, the first major injury of his career, all that stuff. I, you hold on to Reed, you hold on to Tari at all costs. That leaves you, you know, Cam and Jabari to work with to add to this deal. I feel like three young players is enough Maybe you can squeak by and include Cam Whitmore, and then you 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 get to keep Jabari or vice versa. You throw Jabari into the mix to to give the Bucks another forward to replace Giannis, um, and then it, 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 you be able, you're able to keep Cam Whitmore, who can play that guard spot. He can he can slide up to the three. Um, you know, he's got the physicality, the size to play on the wings. Uh, I, I don't know what my preferred deal would look like. It it sucks even like entertaining this thought, but at the same time. That's what it takes to get a superstar in the middle of their prime, right? And you would, so you, you're talking about, you know, three, maybe four members of the young core, and then all just just a confetti cannon of future draft picks. Like every, all the picks that the Rockets own via the Suns, um, some of their own future draft capital would more than likely have to be included in this mix. What draft picks do they have right now? So they've got all the Suns picks that they own, and then the Rockets have their own draft picks all the way out to 2031. So they have access to all their own picks starting. They, they have their own 2028 pick. Um, they've got swap rights with the Brooklyn pick still in 2027. Uh, they've got their own 2027 pick. Uh, like you're talking at least like four or five 
future first rounders, if not potentially more, plus all those young guys. And that's the really hard part is at, at that point, you know, if you're left with, I re up on Fred Van Vliet's contract, potentially, I, I know he's had a rough start to the season, but bear with me here, right? Fred, Jalen, uh, Dylan still potentially, or maybe, you, maybe you have to include, you wouldn't have to include Dylan for, for salary matching purposes. I don't think because especially if you're, if you're including, if you're doing, you know, Shingoon and Jabari and Amin Thompson, those guys make enough to be able to match salary with Giannis on their own because of Shingoon's extension, which kicks in next summer. And then because Amin Thompson and Jabari Smith Jr. are top draft picks, they're also making a healthy amount of money. Uh, Amin Thompson down the line would be making uh, $9.6 million next summer. Jabari Smith Jr. would be making $12.3 million. So you pat, that's 21 mil right there. Shingun is making or will be making 30, just under 34 mil next summer. So that's 54 million combined salary. Giannis is literally making or will be making next summer. $54 million. So those three names together, Shingun, Amin, Jubari, matches your salary to Giannis exactly to where you wouldn't have to include another player in the framework. But I want to get into, yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll keep canvassing down what the lineup would look like and, the, and some of the other pros and cons from this deal. Final thoughts on, on what it would mean and, and whether it's the right move, whether it's the wrong move. Uh, coming up here in our final segment, we'll get there, we'll get there in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by Built Rewards. Look, real talk, we've been there, right? You feel like you're burning cash with your rent checks. It's frustrating, but here's the deal. Built Rewards has figured out a way to make rent more rewarding. Say goodbye to the money bonfire and hello to a renter's revolution with Built. Built is breaking ground as a neighborhood rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent. Every month, pay your rent and watch the Built points roll in. Use points to jet off on a dream vacation, put your points toward a flight or hotel stay with 500 different airlines and over 700,000 hotels and different properties that you can have access to. You can also use your points to book fitness studio classes, redeem them toward a future rent payment. They're designed to meet whatever your lifestyle goals are. So earn your points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash locked on NBA. That's joinbuilt, J-O-I-N-B-I-L-T dot com slash locked on NBA. Make sure to use our URL so that they know that we sent you joinbuilt.com slash locked on NBA to start earning points with your rent payments today. Today's episode is also brought to you by Game Time. Look, maybe you're trying to catch a Rockets game this season, right? There's no better way to buy your Rockets tickets than using Game Time. They've got so many incredible features. They've got their Game Time picks that filters out the fluff to only show you incredible deals on great seats. So you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of different ticketing offers. They've also got their Game Time ticket coverage, their lowest price guarantee, views from your seat so you know exactly what to expect before you get to your venue, before you show up at Toyota Center. Um... They've also got their all-in pricing feature. This is my personal favorite. You toggle it on when you download the app. They are fully transparent with your price from start to finish. So take the guesswork out of buying your tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NBA. That's L O C K E D O N N B A for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. And final segment here at Locked On Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything. Houston Rockets basketball. Okay. So I kind of started on one thought there and, and interrupted myself, I guess. I want to f- try to wrap this conversation up. And I'm sure, honestly, with the way these rumors work, I, I'm sure that this won't be the last time that we talk about it. I'm sure we'll revisit it at you know various points throughout this season. Some kind of temperature checks, some check ins on rumors, what's going on with Giannis, you know how how the Bucks are doing, whatever. Um, but back to the point that I started to make, right? If you do, if the trade is, we'll say, operating under the assumption it's Shingun, Amin, and Jabari for Giannis plus a bunch of draft picks. That leaves the Rockets with essentially what you would imagine is Fred Van Vliet, Jalen Green, Dylan Brooks, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and then a hole at the starting five spot. So that's that's a little bit concerning there. Now, maybe they're able to re-up and bring back Steven Adams. Maybe they go find somebody. They've still got Jock Landale under contract, but that's kind of a big question mark is you leave a hole at that five spot. Now, one possibility here is that you just insert Tari Eason into the starting lineup and you basically make Giannis your starting five and you go with a switch everything 
you know, one through five defensive scheme, which it plays into the strengths of what Ime Udoka likes to do, right? We see him do this a lot already with Jabari Smith Jr. But playing Giannis at the five would be like a supercharged version of the Jabari Smith Jr. small ball lineups. Now, would Giannis be want to play the five full time? We don't know. You know, would, would the Rockets need to go find a stretch big to be able to play next to Giannis situationally throughout the season or even potentially start next to Giannis, even if it's ceremonial largely where he only plays, you know, 15, 20, 25 minutes a night, whatever. And, and a lot of the Rockets minutes are with Giannis at the five ball. Who knows? Or at the five five spot, not five ball. Um, but that lineup is intriguing, right? Fred, Jalen, Dylan, Tari, and Giannis. That's a really interesting lineup. And then you also factor in, right, continued growth from Reed Shepard, from Cam Whitmore. Uh, you know, maybe Cam Whitmore is the is the future heir to taking over that spot from Dylan Brooks in the starting lineup. Uh, the Rockets would be sacrificing quite a bit of their depth in order to make this trade happen. And that's kind of the, that's the other downside here is when you consolidate a bunch of these assets for a team as deep as the Rockets appear to be, you know, you would then need to be able to go out on the market and using, using your MLE, using other potential assets, right? Whatever you have left over after the Giannis trade to flesh out that roster. Cause on paper, that roster is not an immediate contender. Like that roster, like getting, getting Giannis is huge, right? But you're kind of at a point where, okay, if you do get Giannis, what does the rest of the roster look like, right? Do you have enough to realistically compete? And at that point, you're really banking on, is Jalen Green an all-star caliber player? And if he is, great. Do you have the commensurate, do you have the other role players, the other pieces around them that are complementary enough in nature to have a better situation than what's going on in Milwaukee? Now, the good news is for the Rockets, they're not nearly the aging team that the Bucks are. Um, you know, Fred is a little older. Dylan is, is going to be on the wrong side of 30 sooner rather than later. But those guys are still very high quality role players. And for the most part, largely available, not dealing with a ton of injuries, whatever. Um, I don't think we're going to see like a Chris Middleton happen situation happen with either of them, uh, suddenly overnight. But are you able to then match some of the top talent in the Western conference, right? How does a Giannis Jalen led team with the right role players in Dylan, Tari, Fred, still got Reed and Cam who still have a lot of sky high potential. And maybe that, uh, you know, maybe one of them, if one of them hits, then I think that it, it eases things a little bit, but that's where you start getting into the idea of like, man, you know, are you willing to mortgage the, the future potential of guys like Shingun, the star potential of guys like Shingun, like Amin Thompson in order to get a true superstar right now. But is that superstar enough to put you over the top? And if he's not, do you have a realistic pathway after that move to add the other pieces that you need to add potentially another star player? Is Giannis the type of star player that would attract other star players to want to come play in Houston? The more that I'm sitting on it, the more that I'm thinking about it, the more that I'm like, I don't want to say against the idea of doing it because again, at like adding a top five, top three superstar in his prime is what every team would, would, would love to be able to do. And anybody who says that they wouldn't want to trade for Giannis is, is definitely out of their minds. But that's the tough part is figuring out, is it the right trade, right? Are you giving up too much? Does your team have a viable path to winning games after said trade? And I do genuinely think, I think that the Rockets with that formation of guys with Giannis, uh, even if they don't go out and get a stretch five, like Gian Giannis playing full time at the five, potentially maybe even as he ages, maybe that's a better role for him. Um, I don't know. You know, there's, there's there's a handful of those really big bodied centers in the NBA that the Rockets would have to have really solid defensive game plans against. Right, you'd have to have something really creative for dealing with Jokic, for dealing with Embiid, um, for dealing with you know Zach Eady down the line. I don't know if he, if he becomes a monster, but ultimately, you know, you wouldn't have to rely on Giannis guarding those guys in single coverage, especially if you have a gritty defensive switch everything team where all five guys are on the floor who are all plus defenders, then 
maybe you just swarm the ball, right? You send two to the ball, you double, you trap, you do, you can get creative defensively. And if there's one thing that I do trust Ime Odoka to be able to do, it's getting creative defensively. It's figuring out ways to shut down star players and it's leaning into his preferred defensive identity of a switch everything scheme. So there's a lot of pros there. Uh, the downsides though is, again, to maximize Giannis, you need shooting. And this Rockets roster has shown to be anything but a good shooting roster. Now, some of that is you'd be getting rid of some of the not great shooters with Shingun and Amin Thompson. Uh, Jabari got it up to league average last season, but he still hasn't become like a dead-eye knockdown shooter. Now, theoretically, Fred is a good shooter. Dylan's been a good shooter. Uh, Jalen is improving as a shooter. And Tari Eason has been a respectable shooter to his to this point in his career. So maybe that's enough shooting around Giannis. And then Reed Shepard, you know, lights out shooter. Eventually the replacement to Fred Van Vliet in the starting lineup. Cam Whitmore off to a horrendous start this season, but has shot the ball really well, you know, last season in his rookie year. And I do expect Cam Whitmore to get back to a place where he's shooting pretty consistently. That's a pretty strong top seven, honestly. And if you're keeping Steven Adams, if you go out there and maybe, you, maybe you're able to trade and flip some of the other into the bench guys, maybe you package and trade Jock Landale, Jay Shantae to get one more like impactful wing to bring off the Houston Rockets bench um, because ultimately you're going to need somebody to cycle the minutes between Dylan Brooks and Tari Eason at the end of the day, uh, somebody else to absorb those backup minutes at the 3-4 spot, or maybe you just rely on Cam Whitmore to eat up those minutes, uh, and you're able to cycle, you know, some heavy minutes between Fred Van Vliet, Reed Shepard, and Jalen Green in the backcourt. I don't know. I'm The more that I think about it, I think there is something there, but I just don't know if it's the right move for the Rockets. It's, it's way, at this point, it's just way too early to tell, but I figured I would address the rumors. I figured I'd talk about them on the show. Figured I would lay out some of the pros and cons, some of the scenarios, some of what it would ultimately look like, uh, why it could work, why it might not work, uh, all that stuff. And I'm very curious your thoughts because this is this is going to be something that probably uh, pursues throughout the season. I'm guessing it goes past the trade deadline. I'm guessing it's probably the big story next off season is you know where does Giannis ultimately go because it it, fe- it doesn't feel like the Bucks have the ability to turn it around. I I think the Bucks are going to have a completely just dysfunctional, blow-it-up kind of season, and they're going to have to deal with some very hard questions at the end of the year. And one of those hard questions is going to be, what happens with Giannis? Does he demand a trade? And if he does, are the Houston Rockets going to be in play for him? I want your thoughts in the YouTube comments. Let me know how you're feeling about the Rockets potentially pursuing Giannis, all that good stuff. But as always, thanks so much for checking out the show. Remember, the best way you can help us out is to listen every single day on a podcast platform of your choosing. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Drop us your comments while you're there. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball.